That worked out. Could put the current streak in the title. I think I'll do that once we get a little higher. 3 0, I don't feel like. Eh, There's not that much of a streak. Alright, Ironclad. I apparently started an Ironclad run already. We're fighting the ye old Hexaghost. We've got a really late Burning Elite, which is pretty interesting. So I may end up going for the Act 1 Burning Elite. I've been liking finding opportunities to get the Burning Elite out of the way. In Act 1, he's not that threatening. We've got a pretty good path that hits him, too. Four fires, two elites. The, uh,. The legendary... Wow. Look at the start of this act. There's no path here that doesn't hit four hallway fights. Move a card, 100 gold, max hit points. Or boss relic. Well, 100 gold would be a lot more appealing if there was a store anywhere sooner than here. Can't use that to help us fight the elite. Maximum hit points is nice. I really like having max hit points on Ironclad. Doesn't also also because of the current hit point damage does not help us right now. I could simply remove a strike. And that'd be pretty whatever. Goal is to get to 10, yes, Boomer. Going for a perfect heart fight streak. If I can get two, I would be pretty happy with that. Or take a boss relic. Boss relic's pretty ambitious here. Not that ambitious. Yeah, as Just Brom says, the pathing is not nice for the variants the boss relic can produce. In fact, um, a really bad boss relic and I die here. Like calling bell into three curses and bad relics die right here. Which we don't we do not want to do. Man, none of these help me that much right now. I guess I could take 14 maximum hit points. It'll help our resting, which we're almost assuredly going to be doing at some point in this act. Take some good old maximum HP. Okay, optimal draw order against cultists. And that doesn't even get him into kill range, but I think we're okay doing block block strike next turn. And now a three strike draw, which we're guaranteed to get, will kill him. So we take one damage and heal five. We can high roll, yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh man, first card headbutt or armaments. Both are very solid here. In terms of a, a card that provides a lot of immediate value. Armaments, just upgrading cards in your deck in the early fights is pretty significant. Um, headbutt is just a solid attack that goes in so many ironclad decks, and I think if we're looking to fight an early elite, having a headbutt is really good. So we're gonna grab one here. Am I hitting this guy because he's buffing strength? I think I am. Am I taking three to just hit them both one time? Maybe that's actually the better route here. We're drawing mostly attacks. Yes, I am taking three. To so just hit them each one time. Wow, did that ever pay off? Look look how much damage I'm taking this round if I hadn't taken three damage last round. Blood potion's nice. Uppercut is excellent. Uppercut is one of the best early ironclad cards for taking down elites. This is incredible against Nob, incredible against Legafool, and decent against the sentries. And we have a headbutt so that we can pull it back, which means we can avoid upgrading our bash, basically. And we're looking at a lot of health. This blood potion heals for more than usual, thanks to our high max hit points. We're on a collision course with just punching this elite in the face repeatedly and winning. Um, but we're also on a collision course with five hallway fights in a row, thanks to this being a fight. Uh, and that means that no matter which route we took... Actually, maybe this route. Maybe this route into the early elite, but there's no route here that avoids uh, avoids that punishing early elite action. Or sorry, early early hard pool hallway fight action. Excuse me. Drawing uppercut. What am I drawing into? 
Defend Strike Uppercut. Let's get him another defend here, although I'm not sure why I need that. Let's try full blocking. I'm anticipating a buff next turn. Sixty-seven's a good hit point value to be at. Eruption. It's interesting. We could take the armaments that we didn't take earlier, and I'm pretty okay with that. I think it is a little early for corruption. Yeah, we would definitely have taken any AoE damage we were offered. We unfortunately were not offered any, so we might be in a lot of trouble in a moment here, depending on what we roll for fights. Because these two mana attacks are really bad against the uh, the five enemy fights we're about to be looking at. Good luck to us. Okay, this is not too bad. This is definitely comparatively not bad <laughs> by any means. We're going to go ahead and drink our uh, blood potion right now. So if we get a potion off this fight, we can pick it up. Uh, how much damage is Bash Headbutt? 21? 8 plus 13? 21? Guy hits harder. I think I want to bash this Lion Boy. Maybe even, like, bash headbutt the slime boy. So that I can rest assured of a kill next turn. Might be the right route. Yeah, it's that 10 incoming damage I wanted to stop here. Okay, I'd say we got away with this one pretty scot-free here. Very good fight, considering it was a hard pull hallway fight. Clothesline... Not really. I don't mind a power through this early. Somebody gifted you a sub last night as you fell asleep while watching you. That was probably Orin Games, Jubba Dubba. Aw, glad to hear I'm your favorite streamer. That Thank you. Man, I'm I'm still like I'm still new enough at this that it boggles my mind whenever I find out that I'm somebody's favorite. Or somebody expresses a sentiment like that, it's like, oh my gosh, what? Impossible. So power through is just so much block. Probably don't use it in the Hexaghost fights. Um, we're early enough that we can... I like Power Through. Like, it's a really, really strong card. It does a... it has a very large number on it. And the wounds that it adds to your deck can actually be a good thing sometimes. Uh, in which case it's a really good card. I'm not inclined to take Clothesline with the Copper Cut already present. Body Slam is a little ambitious at the moment. Let's take a Power Through. Oh, I'm so glad I have a Power Through in this deck. Okay, this isn't too bad of a gremlins fight. We could have gotten much worse than this. Two fat gremlins and an angry gremlin means the most we ever take is uh, 15 damage a turn. There's no wizard here, there's no sneaky gremlin here. So this is relatively not bad. I think I'm okay taking, I think I am okay taking five here. I'm almost tempted to stick a whale on this turn. I'm gonna be weak. I would like to draw either Uppercut or Bash at discounted price. Or at normal price. Normal price is fine too, I suppose. Do I just Bash Strike, kill a Fat Gremlin here? Take 10? We are now confused, so this fight is going to get suck. Yeah, let's just... Kill one. This fight could be ugly now that we're confused from the potion that didn't do anything. Or it could go flawlessly for the same reason. That is also a distinct possibility. Uppercut strike is... 15 damage? Kill you. Take five more. I 
Oh, thanks, Tom Gather Icon. It's so cool to have a community growing around the stream these days. Power through? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Probably killing something with uppercut. We just want to end this fight quickly, right? By uppercut strike. You. You're going to be weakened and put at 7, so you're actually going to stay at the same damage. And then you'll be Commander, next turn. we've just received the support of another council Awesome leader. Igor, or awesome Igor. Whichever, whichever pronunciation is your favorite, welcome to the council! Thanks so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Glad you're enjoying the content. And enjoy your new waffle. Delicious. Yeah, let's, uh, let's boop this guy. I don't know if that's the right move. I'm gonna say it was, because of the sh the uh, fat gremlin got shielded. So it worked out in the end. Leaving this with 63 health is actually really solid. We don't have a potion, which is a little upsetting, but other than that, we're good. Just bash uppercut. 6 plus 13. It's not gonna kill. Fight. <laughs> Boomer bot. How'd it work? Hey, we got our blood potion back. Shockwave versus flame barrier. Ooh. Shockwave is even more weak and vulnerable, which is very exciting. Flame barrier is great against Hexagos. We already have a really good block card. We already have a lot of two cost cards. So I'm leaning more towards the... Well, I mean, this is also a two cost card. So either way, we're adding a two cost card. Do I want it to be a block or a debuff? When will we play XCOM 3? As soon as it comes out. I I can't wait to see how buggy it is on release. Current XCOM is 3. Current XCOM is not 3, unfortunately. Current XCOM is negative 2. So against elites specifically, uh, Flame Barrier is actually pretty okay against Nob. So is Shockwave. So is Shockwave. God, they're all great. Actually, I don't have... Real I'm gonna take the shockwave. It's what I want, deep in my heart. Alright, try sentries makes me reasonably glad that I took the shockwave. Reasonably glad that I took the shockwave. Uh, I think I bash one of the ones at the end here. I could power through to save 5 health, but 2 wounds into the deck this early in the fight is, I think, ambitious. So I'd rather uppercut and block ones. Could have also struck him. There might have been some merit to just going ham here. Try to get a kill early. To mitigate the damage from this fight. Um, 13.99? Is exactly 31? Yeah, so I can just kill him. That seems good, right? That seems really good. Take my uppercut back. And now we can start to think about maybe blocking a little bit more often. So let's strike upgraded here. Uh, I'm gonna look to kill this guy before the next time his attack runs rolls around. So we're gonna target him down. See you later, Ryan Hunter. Thanks for tuning in, as always. We just play defensively now. Hopefully we can leave this fight with, like, 40 health, at least. No? Perhaps not.
Okay, that'll weaken him. Which is significant here. I am almost guaranteed to draw damage next turn. So it's probably worth playing the uppercut on this entry. Unfortunately, uppercut headbutt is not a kill. Oh, I can guarantee that I draw enough damage to kill next turn? Good, yeah. So we're gonna uppercut. Oh, we're not playing headbutt though. We're gonna uppercut. And draw a strike. Hooray. And then I have power through next turn. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna leave with exactly 40. I'll take it. I will take it. Art of War. If we don't play any attacks during our turn, gain an additional energy next turn and a steroid version. Now how do we feel about a body slam, now that we have a power through? A little bit better? What is my pathing from here? I would like to fight this Burning Elite. So we're going to go Fire, Relic, probably Rest here. So one upgrade, one Rest, two events, Burning Elite, Shop. And I think with a Steroid Potion, we're really not afraid of the Elite. Uh, upgrade at the stu uh, the Fire is probably going to be Armaments, so we can upgrade more things in hand. Artivore is actually going to be really nice for the Shockwave turn. When we're playing Shockwave, a lot of the time we're not doing any attacking. So we'll get an extra energy the following turn, which is great. Yeah, the front of the path sucks and the back end looks awesome. That is why we took the path. I thought it was worth struggling. Well, first of all, the front of all the paths sucked, but it's often worth taking a, a pretty sucky path if you get to do something like this in the back end. And it can be worth doing something of a gamble, like fighting a, an early elite that is kind of a risk in order to get a really good path later on. Especially on the really high ascensions where you need a bit of a high roll to get a win. It's a, a calculated gamble, as it were. Man, I want this deck to want a body slam. I don't think it does yet. Take it anyway. It's at least free if we draw it alongside armaments. Oh, prayer wheel. Okay, so that's great. Normal enemies drop an additional card reward. This is a rare relic and one of the better ones in the game. Uh, finding a prayer wheel early is a godsend for a run. It only applies to hallway fights, so that makes hallway fights a lot more valuable for us right now, given that they give us two cards instead of one card. And let's find important powers. I would like to, s to see um, battle trances. I would like to see heal no pains. I would like to see evolves right now. Evolve more than anything else, actually, with the... Uh, with the whatchamacallit, the power through. I still think we're taking... I don't want to take this hallway fight. Because it could be like five gremlin... Five slimes or something stupid. I'm definitely okay with a couple events here. Sure. Oh yeah. That was so worth every hit point we traded. Pocket Watch. Whenever you play three or less cards during your turn, take draw three additional cards at the start of your next turn. This is one of the most powerful relics in the game. And we are very, very happy to see it. Uh, the Upgrade All Basics is in Act 2, Rufus. In Act 1, the strongest events we can see are, like, free upgrades. We can see the Cursed Tongs event. Um, if we're feeling really strong, we Dead Adventure is pretty good. I have wonders luck except for this particular event. I This event has never liked me. Never in, in its life. We're still fighting the Burning Elite, even more so now that we pocket watch. Like, we're completely unafraid of most fights. Hundred fifty gold. It's a lot of money going into that store, but we have to fight the Burning Elite with a doubt in the deck, and I don't get to remove a strike. I'll disagree here. Okay, let's get all these upgraded. So we draw eight cards per turn, every single turn, because I have no way to play more than three cards a turn ever. Oh, power three uppercut. I would like to open with an uppercut, so we're gonna shockwave this turn. 
Uh, I think I wanted to bash before I did that. Bash Shockwave? Well, no, I want the extra Art of War energy here. So on the third turn, Lycavulin will wake up. Let's go ahead and use our Blood Pot. Do I want to use my Steroid Potion here? Oh, I still could have bashed, actually. This is a Metallicized Lycavulin. I don't think you can duplicate a card in Act 1. I've never seen that happen. Um, what you can get is a curse for 275 gold. That's a really good one. Uh, you're off of, the Serpent offers you a curse for 175, but there's the Shrine you can desecrate to gain 275. That's really good. Uh, Face Trader into one of the good faces is really good. What else is really, really good in Act 1 events? Mostly like free heals and free upgrades. Match and Keep and getting a rare, a rare card early is very powerful as well. Or the uh, Spin a Wheel event and getting either the gold or a relic or a full heal. Three strike turn. Well, we can uppercut strike strike this, or sorry, uppercut headbutt something this turn. Next turn I'm probably just blocking. We're fighting Hexy G. We're just going to dominate Hexagos. We don't even need to worry about him. Okay, we dumpstered Legoville in here. I think I want to full block this turn uh, by playing three cards, so I both trigger Art of War and Pocket Watch. I'll draw eight cards next turn and have four energy to play them with. And there will be more upgraded cards in the deck. And now I can do, like, oh man, armaments? Power through. Body Slam is currently doing 37 damage. We're doing some really strong things with this deck already. The power through becomes a lot better when we have a pocket watch to negate the... to negate the downside. Of having uh, wounds in the deck. Okay, good fight. That was a perfect, perfect super elite. We get a singing bull, so we can get even more max hit points now by skipping cards, which we see two of whenever we beat a regular enemy. So that's pretty sweet. Get the emerald key out of the way. How do I feel about these cards? Not that excited? Not that excited. Combust is okay. Combust is fine AoE damage, actually, which we're currently struggling to find. So maybe I want the uh, maybe I want the combust here. The end of your turn, lose one hit point, and deal five damage to all enemies. It's also worth noting that taking two max hit points right now means this blood potion heals for one more health. Please note two thirty one hit points. <laughs> I don't think this is the run for that, but this is definitely the start of an interesting hit point engine. Now, if I get Feed and Runic Pyramid off the boss, we can talk. Grab a Combust. Uh, do I just take the Rupture to go with the Combust we just took? Anger is pretty interesting for a deck that draws a lot of cards. I'm I'm really liking the idea of remove strike add rupture here. What does the waffle do? One of my favorite emotes, Lay Frank. We've got a we've got an emote ba or one of my favorite relics. We have an emote based on it. Um, this raises your max hit points by seven and then fully heals you. Why anger when I've got the watch? Specifically because I have the watch. Drawing eight cards in a turn means having free cards in your deck is pretty good. So we end up in a kind of a rotation where we draw eight cards and like play most of them, and the next turn we play, we draw five and play three to get the watch set up again. Yeah, we don't need the waffle because we're beating Hexago. We're like, we, we win the Hexagos fight as is. So the waffle's nice for the max hit points, but we don't need it. It's almost arguably better to take the strawberry because we get the seven max hit points, but it's cheaper. 
So if I wanted seven hit points, I would take the strawberry, not the waffle, unfortunately. Uh, it's also healthier for you. The waffle goes just straight to the thighs, you know? Well, I seem to be waffling about in this store, huh? I'm gonna grab the rupture. Gaining one strength whenever you lose a hit point off of combust is pretty swanky. Is the word I'm going to choose to describe the situation, and man, is that a weird word. Anger's on sale. Sure, get in my deck, Anger. And we have a lot of unupgraded cards. Thank goodness we have armaments. We're upgrading Combust for the better AoE damage. This is mostly a upgrade we don't need for the fight we're going into, but rather an upgrade that helps with Act 2. This is Act 2 I'm worried about. Combust will be great against the Elites in Act 2 that we're probably going to be fighting. Okay, turn one Shockwave is excellent. Here's another reason why somebody was asking why Anger with uh, why Anger with Pocket Watch, because two cost cards. I can play Anger here. Shockwave, um, I don't think I want to headbutt the Anger, but I could do uh, headbutt, play the Anger, get all the damage down, and still trigger a Pocket Watch here, even though I played an Anger. So I could power through here. I don't feel compelled to do so. I like Armaments Combust Defend, that gives me both a Pocket Watch and an Art of War proc for next turn. We draw all of this crap. This is bad cards, but we're drawing through them. Maybe trading maybe 20 of our hit points to beat Hexaghost, I, I think that's the, the evaluation here. 20. Just play Bash, extend the vulnerable. Yeah. That seven damage per turn from Combust is not to be underestimated, by the way. It is quite significant. Okay, this is a turn where we don't uh, we don't turn the pocket watch on. We're just gonna play a lot of cards here. I can double defend to full block and then do strike anger anger. Or I can even take some and play another Strike Plus to get more damage down quickly. I could power through to full block. You know what? Let's do that. Let's be the greediest we can. Okay, either of these full blocks so I can play the armaments. That headbutt upgraded just in case we ever draw it again. Which I'm not certain that we're likely to do here. As you can see, we appear to be winning the Hexagos fight. Uh, so this I could play, but it'll mean less draws next turn. We're dealing 25 damage, so I think I kill next turn anyway. I wanted to wish you some Merry Christmas and a good time at my family's. Thanks, Sibley. I appreciate that. I have no idea how much or how little I'm going to be able to stream next week. Do I get bonus strength and burn damage? Yes. Rupture will give you bonus strength off of burns, which is super cool. Okay, Immolate means I just dumpster Act 2 Elites. This card just destroys Act 2 Elites. This card is um, mostly a card that's great at turning off Stopwatch, I think, Double Tap. But Immolate's huge AoE damage, especially in a deck where we have AoE weak and vulnerable, is very, very strong. Interesting, so we're, we're offered some options here. Runic Dome, gain energy at the start of your turn but can no longer see enemy intents. Gain energy at the start of your turn, but can no longer gain gold. Not that excited about Ecto here. Or transform all strike defend cards. We have... Not much block if I get rid of my defends. Not much block at all. I could see this deck operating well on, uh, on a Pandora's here. What's this deck so far? Looks like... Um, how I would describe it, Carissa, is... Pocket Watch 
is how I would describe this deck. Dome is... Dome is definitely scary. Dome is less scary on this Ascension. I'm trying to figure out how often I actually use the extra energy. Pandora seems unnecessarily risky. Prayer Bowl Singing Wheel. We can do some weird things with this deck. Yeah, Dome is ranked a lot lower. Um, one of the biggest reasons Dome ended up being ranked a lot lower was Time Eater started killing everybody on Ascension 20. And the... We, we changed our philosophy about the Act 3 boss a lot, actually, when, um, when Ascension 20 and when the Heart especially came out. Because back in the Ascension 15 days, when we were just doing Ascension 15 win streaking, usually how runs played out was that you entered the Act 3 boss on full health. Because you you took a very safe path through Act 3, played very defensively, and you rested a lot. And you, you went, got to the Act 3 boss with like somewhere between 60 and 90 health, and you used all of it to make sure you would win that fight. And given that there's an Act 4 now and on ascension 20 there's two bosses you can't just trade all of your health to beat a boss anymore like you could with old runic dome that doesn't work nearly as well and i think that's one of the bigger reasons certain strategies and certain relics have uh, fallen out of favor it's why potions are better you need potions when you can't trade all of your health to win a boss fight certainly this is a tough choice I definitely feel like uh, Pandora's Box isn't the wrong choice. Let's do it. I, I want to see what the new Pandora's Box high rarity cards looks like here. Let's take a Pandora's Box. I knew we were going to get a Berserk. I fucking knew it. But I see Rage, Second Wind, Disarm, Metallicize, and some other stuff. This is... Pretty damn good, is how I'm going to describe this. Pretty damn good. Set of cards. Uh, particularly Second Wind in a deck that has a power through is really exciting. And maybe sometimes we'll play Berserk, honestly. I bet we play Berserk more than none of the time. How do I feel about the Elites? A little bit scared, but a little bit bi-curious about them also. You don't have to fight them. Go like fire, fire, fire. Maybe fight Elite Elite. We already got the Burning Elite out of the way. We don't have to fight Elites if we don't want to. How does this deck deal with Champ? We play Berserk against Champ because we're going to be vulnerable anyway. <laughs> what was changed about Box? Uh, Box used to have... A 0% chance of giving you a rare card. It used to be 67% chance of un of common cards and 33% chance of uncommon cards. And now it's 33% common, 33% uncommon, 33% rare. So it changed completely in terms of its ability to give you rares. We got Impervious Berserk, which is kind of exciting. Which way am I going? It's a lot of question marks if I want to do that. It's kind of ambitious. Upgrade all strikes defense is not very appealing right now, huh? Do I remove Berserk before Reckless Charge is a great question to myself. I think I don't. Not without an Evolve. We really do want an Evolve in this deck right now. Go to that store. We do want to do a reasonable number of hallway fights because we have the Singing Bull pocket uh, Prayer Wheel combination. Let's see how one of them goes. Three birds. Okay, with Bash, Pommel Strike, Luckus Charge, I can knock one of them out of the air here. Probably want to hit the one who's attacking me. To avoid the six damage now. There's definitely something to be said for knocking one out of the air who's uh, buffing. 
But I plan on doing stronger things next turn. Yeah, much stronger things. Much, much stronger things are happening. Okay, I can armaments power through disarm body slam or something ridiculous like that. Or I can armaments impervious body slam and I think just kill one. It's actually not a kill, but it is a lot of damage. Certainly feels like a fight we win without using uh, Combust in. Armaments Impervious Body Slam is pretty heckin' good. Next turn we're gonna draw all of these cards. So I should have a plan for how I intend to deal with my foes. Maybe Disarming this turn is good. Impervious, Disarm, well, Armaments, Disarm, Power Through, Body Slam. I can kill the Downed One and neutralize this guy. I'm only drawing five cards next turn if I do that. Or I can not play the Body Slam, don't deal, don't deal 37 damage, and draw more cards. I think I'm actually going to choose to do that. Beautiful. I could almost play Berserk here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to uppercut, headbutt, probably play the Metallicize. Knock this guy out of the air. Sure is a lot of no block in this hand. So this does 14 damage to the airborne ones. I can I can immolate, pommel strike, kill these two. We're taking eight. Or no, nine, if I do that. Or I can pommel strike and hope to draw into like impervious shockwave or something. Might as well. Okay, shockwave. Shockwave reduces the incoming damage by a lot. Go down to nine, go down to zero, you stay at three. So I take the exact same as if I play Immolate, except two of them aren't dead. So I'm just going to play the Immolate. All right, good fight. That was actually a pretty solid demonstration of the deck's power, I think. Um, Warcry plus, no thanks. A lot of cards that turn off um, Pocket Watch here, on offer. I don't think I want to cleave, we have an Immolate. I think I can just take four maximum hit points here. And be pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, transforming a Parasite does cause you to immediately lose the max HP. It counts as removing it. So you also like, that's why you can't transform... <gasps> oh man, did we ever get rewarded. You happen upon what looks like a purple fire spirits, dancing around a large bonfire. Spirits toss small bones and fragments into the fire, which brilliantly erupts each time. As you approach, the spirits all turn to you expectantly. Let's offer a card. You toss an offering into the bonfire! The flames burst, nearly knocking you off your feet as the fire doubles in strength. Spirits dance around you excitedly before merging into your form, filling you with warmth and strength. We got 10 maximum hit points. We're getting rid of our, uh, our Berserk there, as uh, with this Bonfire Spirits event, any rare card donated gives you 10 max HP. So we're now sitting at 103 maximum hit points, which is a really good place to be at. And we don't have a Berserk anymore which is also a really good place to be at. I'm not at all unhappy that we got a fight here, because that means more singing bull procs, presumably. Do armaments metallicize. I don't actually do any damage here. So let's just let, uh, let's just let Art of War proc.
Okay, if I play Rage, Uppercut, Disarm, Second Wind? <laughs> what is this turn? I can full block, I just have really weird ways to do it, apparently. Oh no, I have uh, Rage, Uppercut, Disarm is going to be enough on its own. That's three cards played. We got another Pocket Watch proc. Does it need even to, to be Rage? I could do Uppercut, not play the Rage. Which disarm put you down to five times two, so I need ten block. Which then goes to six times two. We still need yeah. Okay, so rage uppercut disarm. Then we have full block covered. Yeah, you cannot you cannot normally remove a bottled card by any means. I think they patched out all the issues where that's a problem. Finally, it took a long time. Um, it happens a lot in uh, Endless Mode that bottled cards become an issue for some reason. What is this hand? Can I find Body Slam here? It certainly feels like the kind of hand where I play a bunch of cards and don't worry about the pocket watch here. Let's just do as like, much damage as I can. It's a pretty good turn. Um. Oh no, I'm taking a damage. How horrible. Do I recall? I do, every run. <laughs> there was the actual question. I don't think we've, uh, I don't think I've ever given up a bottled card on stream in any way. Uh... DNS. I'm pretty sure it's not possible to give up a bottled card without removing the bottle to in-law. Which I think is the only way to lose a relic, by the way, is in-law. Okay, poison potion probably better than... well, is it? Hold on. Inflame Juggernaut, hold on. Evolve! Hey, Evolve! We're very happy to see Evolve. We have a Reckless Charge and a... Um, and a Power Through in the deck. We really want a copy of Evolve here, so we're gonna grab that. Do I want an Inflame and Slash or Juggernaut? Juggernaut is an interesting way to do damage for this deck. This is a hot mess of a deck. <laughs> this deck is one hot mess. Inflame is more strength. We already have strength with Rupture Combust, right? Inflame gets us ahead of the game there. Hey, Digital Shuckle. Yeah, Endless Mode is... Endless Mode is... Well, I, actually, my main problem with Endless Mode, to be clear. So, let's talk about Endless Mode for a little bit. Endless Mode is... For those of you unfamiliar, how Endless Mode works is you run through the game, and if you succeed at your run... It's a special mode. Uh, if you succeed at your run, you're put... If, after you beat the Act 3 boss, you're put back in Act 1 with your... All your relics and your deck intact and all that. And all the enemies scale up in their hit points and their damage and you play through the game again. So you get to keep your deck going, which is super exciting. Um, but the way the game scales Endless Mode is kind of stupid, and it, it just ends up uh, punishing decks too hard that, uh, that try to do anything other than kill everything on turn one. So each cycle, I think it's like 50% more hit points and 50% more damage to all the enemies. Um, so what ends up happening is that you end up in later parts of an endless run, like once you're on cycle two or three, enemies are swinging for like 80, 90, or over 100 damage on turn one. And as it turns out, it's actually really difficult to scale your block up. 
There's lots of ways in the in Slay the Spire to generate like a ton of damage on turn one. But generating that much block is a lot harder. You could do it with like uh, in the genetic algorithm defect stuff if you want to. Or with a tiny deck, that would be one way to do it. Um But you quickly reach a point playing it if you go far enough in an endless mode run, you quickly reach a point where it's you kill the enemies on turn one or they kill you on turn one. Uh, so it's very much just a question of, like, how do, how do we build a deck that kills everything turn one? And I think the process of, like, transitioning from a regular run into that is kind of interesting. But once you get to that point, it's kind of a question of, like, how long do you want to play this before you decide your board? I think I'm taking... Juggernaut? <laughs> I'm actually really uncertain here. I want to be a deck that takes Juggernaut, because I really like Juggernaut as a damage source. And like, we're one field of pain away from Juggernaut being insane. Those potions. Okay, all turn one is excellent. I think I just play Immolate here. I could play Shockwave, but I think I'd rather play Immolate, just do some damage. Pocket Watch, go! Alright, well, the Spirit Guardian's dead. Armament's impervious. Body Slam does 45, I can do Rage Reckless Charge for even more. Just go over the, uh, the card play limit here. See you later, dude. Is A20 heart stronger than the A0 heart? Yes, much stronger. Heart is The heart is affected by all the same boss ascension buffs as every other boss. Um, so on ascension 4, it does more damage. On ascension 0, the heart's 15 times attack is a 12 times attack, for example. Uh, it also has 750 hit points instead of 800, which gets buffed at uh, Ascension 8, I think. Spot weakness. Ooh. Okay, this is two hit points. How do I feel about a spot weakness? Not that great. Kind of great, but not that great. We have a really- it's a, I keep looking at the deck, and every time I do, my brain just shuts down, because it's a random mess of cards that I don't know what to do with. Take hit points. Whatever. Alright, Cultus Birdman. Great fight to have evolved in. So I'm going to be playing this. We're going to take 12 and we're fine with that because we are at 107 health. Seems like a reasonable number of health to be at. This is, I think, the first fight we're going to have where we want to actually play Combust because we're kind of afraid of the fight. Are you cool with Immolate Metallicize? Definitely play Immolate for the massive damage. I could just kill you with Pummel Strike. I think I would rather get metallicized down here. I don't want to do this. Armaments, Juggernaut, Reckless ch Rage, Reckless Charge, Anger, something. We do a lot of damage this turn. Though I can't play Disarm if I play Juggernaut. We have Evolve in play, so I'm not worried about the Dazed I'm going to add on top of the deck here. So yeah, I think I'm going to play Armaments first. Upgrade the hands. 
What's the day's done tap? We're gonna get Juggernaut down. And I've got three attacks I can play with Rage here. So I'm triggering Juggernaut off of each of these. Doing a ton of damage. Get bodied. Supposed to drink the blood potion before the end of that fight. Uh, how do I feel about a second second wind? A third wind, as it were. Exhum gets disarm back and impervious back. Which alone, th those alone are pretty good reasons to take an exhum here. It's like playing with a smaller version of the 50 cards random starting deck. Yeah, basically exactly that. It's a great description of it. I think I really like an Exhum. Being able to Exhum Disarm is so powerful in so many fights. It does turn off Pocket Watch a lot of the time, but whatever. I think I would like to upgrade certain cards. How much do I... well, hold on. Three fires or two elites, two fires? We probably want to be semi-aggressively fighting elites right now. Bring it on. Oh man, really good turn one. We got uh, way more desire to play these cards than I have actual energy to play them with. Pretty okay with uh, Disarm Impervious it's Anger here. Disarm the Gremlin Leader, bring him down to four times three. Impervious blocks everything. We can play Anger on the Wizard. This heals for a lot of health. Wow, that heals for a lot of health now. I'd like to get Juggernaut down. Maybe I don't want to play the Anger so that I have an extra energy next turn. Just play Disarm Impervious. There's no world where I play Juggernaut Disarm and just take damage, right? Nah. Okay, we drew into Immolate, which means we just win the fight, basically. Oh, uh, good fight. Although we're slightly shy on damage to actually kill with it, so we have to follow up on both of them. Truly tragic. Get Evolve down in addition to immolating and killing everything? Sure, and that means my Reckless Charge is actually good, so I can do... Immolate! Kill you with a Reckless Charge. It's worked out differently in my head. He's probably resummoning next turn. That should be a good opportunity to get Juggernaut in play. Let's try. It sure is. That's a pretty sweet second win. How many cards is that going to exhaust? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this generates 35 block. That's a lot of block. That is a lot of block. Although we're being attacked for 34 damage, right? Yeah, that's 34. So that's a, that's a full block from one card. A great demonstration of why I picked this up early on. Or wait, no, that was from the Transform, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I would have picked one up <laughs> if I had seen one. It's a good card in this deck. Not sure I want to play the... so we can Body Slam and Uppercut. Do I Second Wind, Uppercut, Body Slam the leader and just do a ton of damage? Wipe the board with Immolate when he's buffing next turn? That sounds great. Way to kill. Give me Emily back. Yeah, hey, good fight. Uh, I guess we can Blood Potion just in case this guy drops something. I wasn't expecting to perfect the Elite, honestly. Oh, I wasted Blood Value, actually. Drop me a potion. No, okay. Well, we have an anchor. Start combat with 10 block. 
Those are good cards. I'm happy with either another Disarm or a Ghostly Armor Plus. We definitely want more block. Yeah, let's take a Ghostly Armor Plus. We are, we are hurting for that. Um, given that we are very likely about to fight Book of Stabbing, we should probably upgrade our Disarm. Although if we're worried about Tri-Slavers, we want to upgrade the Immolate here. Let's get the Disarm upgraded. Elites I don't think have any better potion drop chance than normal enemies, no. Totally Book of Stabbing. Cool. Very good. I could play Reckless Charge for 7 damage and a Dazed, but I think I just want to draw more cards next turn. Take one here. I guess that's okay. If I have to. Um, Disarm plus Waiting Room. Armament's Shockwave is kind of okay. How do I feel about Juggernaut Second Wind? We lose Impervious Armament's Shockwave. Exhume? That's not acceptable. That is completely unacceptable. I'm okay with the... Uh, oh, Armament's Impervious Body Slam is really good. That's a lot of damage. Is that worth fear potioning for? I don't think so. I think this deck is just going to win the fight from here pretty decisively. Next turn we're drawing Disarm Plus. Power through Ghostly Armor. Or whatever. Yep. Get disarmed. I feel about Rage, Uppercut, Anger. It's not going to be enough luck. Well, now I've got a 4 energy 8 card turn. And I can do disgusting things. I think we're going to exhume our disarm and play it again. So one, to one times four. GG. So what, bash, ghostly armor, body slam? Might as well rage. Might as well rage, yeah. Okay, this brings him to zero. Good fight. Oh, baby. Four damage. Not too bad. We got a potion belt. Gain two potion slots. That lets us carry more potions for the rest of the run. Um, we definitely don't mind another body slam in this deck now. Maybe we do. Iron Wave Plus is like kind of okay. Okay with hit points here. 111. Good fight against the Book of Lightly Probing. God damn, this deck is weirdly strong for a 3 energy deck, huh? I'm really, really happy I picked up Pandora's box. Peg of prep. So now it's like we trigger pocket watch on turn one too. Oh boy. Oh boy. Got what evolve upgraded? We're doing a lot of self-statusing here. 300 gold going into the store. Seems fine. Fight this elite. There's some juicy things here that I'm noticing. Uh, if we were to remove any card from this deck, what would it be? Bash? Why, the second body slam not good? Um... I just don't have enough block cards that I can, like, consistently get a lot of block to body slam with at the moment. That's mostly my feeling for it. With this Shrug It Off that we're gonna buy, we're definitely buying this. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit better about that. How do I feel about a Kunai? Not that excited. 
but kind of excited. Every time we play three attacks in a single turn, gain one dex. I think I'd more like to remove Bash, buy Shrugganalf, and buy Warpaint to get two skills upgraded. That can hit all sorts of things. That can hit Exhum, it can hit Second Wind, it can hit Rage, it can hit Impervious, it can hit Shockwave, it can hit Power Through, and any of those are good. See you later, Bash. Second Wind Impervious, not too bad, not too bad at all. I could also buy a potion here for the long term, but I think we're fine in the uh, long term. We'll look to fill these up from random drops as we as we go. Yeah, the event, the uh, the bonfire spirits was really nice. God, was it ever? How are you, gentlemen? I have a rage and a shrug it off and a shockwave. And a combust. Oh man, I have a lot of things I want to play here. I think I'm shrugging. Do I combust Shockwave or shrug Shockwave? We're kind of like waiting for Immolate to beat this enemy for us. Man, we have really good relics. <laughs> this run is incredible. Okay, there's Immolate. So I guess we play that, huh? Play Rage Immolate. Your potion, you. I want you dead soon. You take actual damage? Heresy. Holy crap, this turn, though. That's a turn. I can armaments. No, hold on. I can Juggernaut Second Wind. Kind of interesting. One, two, three, four, five cards being removed by second wind. So that's a full block. It only triggers one instance of juggernaut damage, to be clear. So it's not that appealing. I can't get a kill on this guy, no matter what I do, because I don't have any attacks other than anger. Next turn, though, I'll have impervious body slam and I can just end the fight, even though we're vulnerable. So I'm very okay with uh, just Juggernaut second wins. Don't even play the anger. Kills 30, I can kill you. 10 plus 7 kills you. Good fight. Alright, we took a grand total of 7 damage. We get an Omomori to get a gate to two curses. And we're offered a second exhum. Which is very interesting here. Second Exhum means third copy of Disarm if we want it. What's my reasoning on when to upgrade Evolve? Um, when you have a when you have a lot of status cards being added to your deck, which we do, we we add two wounds to uh, per cycle with Power Through, which is really significant. So that was my reasoning on a priority upgrade to Evolve. Two exhumes might be too many. That's got to be a lie. <laughs> There's no way that's true. Okay, I'm pretty happy with a hallway fight here. I might even deliberately take another hallway fight so we can look at more cards. Cards are good. Did you guys know that? Do I armaments rupture shockwave? Do I rupture combust armaments? That sounds great. Rupture Combust Armaments, we get our strength going in this fight, we start doing some AoE damage. It's not a fight I'm particularly scared of, mind you, but... Okay. 
Play Juggernaut, can disarm you to do no damage. Don't have Body Slam here. Oh, I do have Body Slam. I can impervious Body Slam for a lot of damage, which I think I would like to do. Let's just hit the Chosen really hard and end this fight quickly. That hurts not getting uh, Evolve into play, but whatever. Chosen's at 19 health here. Immolate kills Chosen. Kill Bird with the other thing. Nice. Oh, Entropic Brew with our uh, with our four potion slots. So when we drink this, we get a we fill all of our empty potion slots with random potions, which means we get four potions out of this one potion. We'll probably try to carry this all the way all the way to the heart. Armaments before rupture is always better. Yeah. Generally speaking, there's like there might be reasons it's not better. True grit. I like a true grit. This deck definitely has a lot of stuff I would like to exhaust in most fights. Trigret especially helps against the champ here. Where we can... Exhaust down to what exactly? Oh, I know what we can exhaust down to. We can exhaust down to a body slam deck against champ. That'll be really fun. That'll be really fun to do. Skip this one. I have Omomori. What are the best events I could get? Upgrade all strikes defends is obviously not great here. I would like a barricade in this deck. At this point. I would very much like a barricade. Yeah, I would very much like a barricade. We have Impervious Plus and two Exhumes. I would love a barricade. Necronomicon would be pretty good. Yes, that would be a good event. That would be a very good event. I think that's probably the only one that's particularly good. Could get Designer Inspire. Ah. Let's just ruin another hallway fight. We are very good at that, apparently. Okay, you get four energy, eight cards next turn. We have excellent powers in play. Hot damn, we have excellent powers in play. Okay, Armaments Evolve Shrug Trigret. Can just play Rupture and Reckless Charge because we're going over the four card limit here. managed to actually take damage in this fight of all places. Ah. Well, I don't think it's going to affect our ability to beat Champ. That's kind of interesting. Swift Potion... another power through? Actually, yes, I'll take another power through. That's a really powerful block card for the deck. Whirlwind Plus? Interesting. I think with an Immolate, we're set on AoE damage. I can take some hit points here. I'm gonna upgrade. So many cards I want to upgrade. I think Trigrid is most important for the uh, champ fight, though. So my goal here is to set up a very specific deck against Champ. So we're going to be removing all the cards that don't contribute to that. It should be really easy with our pocket watch.
Get them all then play. So I'm probably not going to hit champ at all for the entire like first part of this fight. Do I play Juggernaut? I might accidentally kill champ if I Juggernaut too early. We don't play it yet. Upgrading all the cards in the deck. Sure, don't lose Ghostly Armor yet. So our goal is to slowly purge all the bad attacks out of this deck. Trigger here. Ooh. I don't want to draw it there. Whoops. Champ is buffing strength, that's okay, he's at negative nine. He can take his time. Do burns count against the perfect? Yes, if you don't block, they do count against the perfect. Uh, we can lose Immolate here. Ghostly armor intact. Buffing strength again. Interesting. To rage twice in one turn. Okay. I'd like to get rid of these wounds, but I also don't want to get rid of like the other cards in the hand. So we're just letting Trigger work slowly here, like getting the bad attacks out of the deck. doing an admirable job of. Sure. And all these wounds. Get out of here, wounds. Now we're talking. Brilliant. I guess I can lose Pummel Strike too, huh? So the goal is to get this down to a bunch of block cards and Body Slam. Pretty much. Which we are now at. Why not get uh, Body Slam upgraded here? Sweet armaments. And we start hitting really hard with our, uh, with our, uh, whatchamacallits. Pretty shortly here. a problem. I dropped too many cards for this to work out in the way I wanted it to. Well, damn. Give him a good whack. So I want to power through, power through, second win, body slam. I think I want to refresh the uppercut here. We can lose our moments now. Let's 
So we have a nine card deck. We're now drawing, I think, every card in the deck every turn. Excellent. Deal 100 damage. Now we only have six cards in the deck. Um, so each turn we play power through, power through, second wins, body slam. And we just do that over and over again until he dies. He actually hurts me here, though just barely. <laughs> Rip! Got him! Ancient Potion's excellent. Uh, with the Potion Belt, we can hold on to that alongside either a steroid or a speed potion and have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of stuff. Bean Fire or Feed or Brutality. There are so many reasons that all three of these are great. Brutality goes with our Rupture to give us more strength every turn, as well as even more card draw. Beanfire goes with our insane card draw already to just uh, to wipe a hand out and do a whole bunch of damage. And feed lets us increase our maximum hit points even more than it already has been increased. And it's something we can exhume so we can get multiple feeds off per fight and upgrade the feed. Oh, we can get so many hit points out of feed. I have to feed, right? I have to feed. I don't think that's the correct play, but I think it's the hilarious play. Um, if this deck wanted to go to 4 energy, Philosopher's Stone would be fine. We have Disarm and 2 Exhumes. Which is pretty ga dang good. Could also take Black Star for extra relics off Elites, because I'm pretty sure we just showed off that we dumpster pretty much every fight in the game at the moment. Or at least every fight in Act 2. Uh, and I don't think Act 3 Elites are going to be any different. But doing this whole thing on 3 energy is a little tough. Not impossible, mind you, but a little tough. Doesn't make the heart that much scarier because of our disarm. And I beat the heart on three energy, is the question, isn't it? How does this deck actually do damage to the heart? <laughs> it's a really important question that I should probably evaluate. I think I would like a 4th energy. Let's grab that Philo Stone here. Okay, Awaken 1's not going to be a problem with our Exhumed Disarm shenaniganry. So I'm probably going to take the, just like the most Fires and Elites route here, which looks like it's going to be 2 Elites. I could do 3 Elites. I got like 2 Elites and a bunch of Fires. Get some good old upgrades. We should be prioritizing Hallway Fights for the extra maximum, so much maximum hit points that we can get out of every hallway fight. So much maximum hit points we can get out of every hallway fight. So we probably just want to take as many of those as possible. Although not this one. Ugh. Ew. I definitely want to play Immolate, right? And Evolve? Turn could be spooky. Not really. We could do Juggernaut Impervious. This is less than 40 damage, so Impervious just blocks all of this on its own. It's insanity. Get that Jug down. I don't think I want to play Combust here. I want to stall this fight out in a way that I get a feed. But I'm happy armamentsing and playing a bunch of stuff.
Cool. Kill the one on the ends. Good. So the current goal is to thin the deck out a little bit so that I can draw impervious and, uh, not impervious, excuse me, feed and armaments in the same turn. Which would be lovely. So I've got power through a second win, I can do disarm. Anything important in the discard pile here? No. They'll lose both the exhumes. We just want the one feed. All right. Power through. Second wind. Thin the deck out a fair bit. Let's headbutt Shrigrit so we can continue to thin the deck out in a directed manner. In order to achieve our feeding dreams. about order. The highest hit points I got last time was uh, 228. Uh, actually, uh, the Munchdown. Quick shout out to the Munchdown, by the way. So like one day later, the Munchdown, I'm watching her channel. She gets an early copy of Feed. Oh, right, my bot's dead. Well, whatever. Twitch.tv slash the munchdown. Um, she, she gets an early copy of Feed, and I'm like, hey, last time I did an Ironclad run, I got 228 hit points. Can you beat that? Um, lo and behold, the Mad Woman actually like, gets Runic Pyramid Feed Duel, just like I did, and ends the run with 230 hit points, beating me out by two hit points. Um, Thanks to a root juice being sold in the Act 4 store. And then eating the heart. Really well done. Incredible run. Great, great Slay the Spire streamer. Okay, so I can headbutt armaments. Draw into armaments. Play armaments. Uh, upgrade the feed. Play feed. Win the fight with four hit points. There's dual wields. We already have Exhum, so we don't need dual wield to duplicate feed for us. We could duplicate our Juggernaut, but that mostly seems ambitious. The name is the Munchdown, and you thought she couldn't beat me at feeding. That's... you know, I hadn't looked at it that way, Taikuro, but you've got a good point. That was the run where I forgot to eat the heart, yes. I would have not lost that competition if I'd remembered to eat the heart. So I think it was a well-deserved loss on my part. That's really funny that it came down to those four hit points. So let's just do more hallway fights, right? Like we just benefit immense. We just got eight maximum hit points from that fight. And this one's going to give way more than that. Potentially. Um, I'd like to try to eat this exploder. It might not happen. We're gonna be here a while, by the way. Okay, I can eat the Exploder, excellent. So Impervious, Immolate, Feed gets a kill. We have all the energy for that, right? That is 31 damage exactly. Yes, Impervious, Immolate, Feed. So we'll exhume that on a later turn, upgrade it for the other two. So we get even, even more max hit points here. That means we don't want to be playing Juggernaut. This deck is so strong at this point that we can like stall fights in weird ways to get optimum hit points out of it, which is disgusting. How have we ended up here, everybody?
Okay, so I've got exhume and armament, so I can exhume feed, upgrade feed, eat this guy. Uh, next turn we have exhume feed again. Let's just deal some damage. Set up a feed kill on this guy. Remove all this crap from my hands. Good old feed plus. Delicious. Okay, so we gained 11 max hit points from that fight. Um, that's a corruption. Second rupture. Interesting. Should start thinking about how to beat the heart here, other than having uh, 200 maximum hit points. Do I want a corruption? Skills cost zero whenever you play a skill. Exhausted. I don't know if this deck actually wants that. I think we want a barricade first. Okay, feel the pain we're definitely taking. Whatever card's exhausted, gain three block. That's good. Hold on. Strange Spoon. Cards which exhaust when played will instead discard half the time. That hits Shockwave. That hits Impervious. That hits Disarm. That hits Exhume. Holy... Holy moly. I can disarm so many times. I don't know if that's actually worth it, though. Especially if we're taking a feel no pain. We probably don't want that. Probably don't want that. Panic button's nice. Another impervious is nice. Some nice things here. Some super nice things here. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we need the strange spoon thing. We actually probably with a field of pain, we probably want to be exhausting our cards. Doesn't matter that it hits status cards with our evolve plus we we kind of want upgraded or we want a lot of status cards in the deck. Definitely grab that. Oh, I can't afford the impervious. Well, I'll probably take the panic button then. Gain thirty block. Can't gain block from cards for two turns. That'll be very useful against the heart. Oh. Yoink that up. And uh, now we have uh, Feel No Pain Juggernaut, which is a really good way to deal damage, and we will pick up the next dual wield that we see. Probably. These guys again. Block for that. It's so rare I don't trigger Pocket Watch on a turn. Oh no! Damage! How horrible. I would like to trigger back. I think I'm playing Combust here. I think we're just okay taking some damage here. It's not like we currently need the health after all. Clear the chaff out of it here. This begins the arduous process of drawing armaments and feet at the same time. Six cards. Not too bad. Not too bad. I 
Mr. Spirit. Let's just uh, kill you, walk like this. Nice. I wonder how many hit points a run could reach if I found Act 1 B, Dual Wheel, Singing Bowl, Prayer Wheel. That's a great question. I too am curious about this. Um. Well, I can just unupgrade it feed here. Or I could spend a long time getting more health than that. Fuck that. Let's just eat the- let's just eat the guy now. <laughs> Reaper. Don't actually have strength yet. Let's get the Reaper. Don't need this one of every rare card deck. Double Exploder! Okay, well we get a multi-feed off here, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. But probably not, uh, probably not on both Exploders, just one of the Exploders. If we're lucky. So what is the best way to do damage and block this turn? Ghostly Armor True Grit is 22 block, that full blocks. I could shockwave, then they're set up to explode next turn and I don't necessarily have a way to kill them. The weaken won't matter. I should get them close to being dead. So I ideally want to like true grit, ghostly armor, immolate. Which will cause me to take a little bit of damage off thorns here. I'm down for that. Let's gamble here. I want the highest chance of a feed next turn. Ooh, did not get there. No feed. So I have to kill both of them or take a lot of damage here. Which we are fortunately capable of doing. Unfortunate. Yeah, we ate some. We ate slime boss four times uh, in that other run, where we got a to 100, 228 health. In involved a quadruple feed on slime boss, which was incredible. Sure. I'm gonna go for the double upgraded feed here. We're gonna stall this one out because these guys are so non-threatening. Here yesterday saw Baitler start Act 3 with 21 hit points, silent without the ability to rest, and still killed the heart. Yes, that did happen the other day. That was a great run. Uh, let's start thinning the deck. Armaments, second wind. Let's get Field of Pain down. Field of Pain, Armaments. I still have one Exhum in the deck, right? So I can get rid of all this crap. Well, I don't want to lose True Grip. Hold on. Let's curate the deck. Stuff here. Okay, here's our woman's feed, finally. Took us long enough to get there, but we got there. Okay, I need to have a uh better draw than this, ideally.
Okay, Reckless Charge is great. Let's get our feedback. Let's get our, our Impervious back. Block with Impervious. Do damage with the Reckless Charge. Eat the Spiker. Delicious! Entrench, if I had a barricade, I would take you. As it is, I simply have 157 hit points. Um, upgrade our field of pain, I think. Upgrading feed would make my life a lot easier, but I'm not willing to do that. We are stubborn here. So we're gonna go this way. Probably then, like, this way? Take a couple events. We have, we have Omomori with two charges. I'm not afraid of events here. I maybe have even want, been wanting to look for Mind Bloom. But it's too late for that now. Alright, Giant Head, what do you have? Actually, better question, what do we have? What do we have? To do with Giant Head. Hmm. How does this deck kill things? How does this deck kill things? Feel the pain down, definitely get evolved down, definitely get... Metallicize and Disarm are basically the same, except the Disarm will block on the turn I play it, so we're gonna play the Metallicize. But I can exhume this. I can't exhume this. Or I can just punch him and make him weak. Stack that, uh, stack those debuffs. Okay, we get to Armaments or Feed, that's excellent. This deck has become bloated. And bad. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's shockwave, keep those debuffs going. Alright, big attack time. Am I set up? Not really, no. How does this deck kill things? What have I done? What have I done? Some I played combust. Okay, body slam's a decent chunk of what we can do here. I think. Oh no. Uh, I think I don't play an attack. I want to draw extra cards here. Although the Reckless Charge will draw me two extra cards anyway. Nah. Okay, there's our Rupture. Notable lack of uh, Body Slam this turn. There it is. But unfortunately I can't play it alongside the uh, Impervious here. Okay, I think we figured out how to do damage. It mostly involves playing Body Slam. How much does this game cost? It is $15 Hulu, and I think it's actually on sale for like 12 on a couple of sites. Um, when the game... The game is going to go up in price when it launches out of early access, which the devs have said is coming on January 23rd. Okay, we're not feeding, right? Oh my god. Well, I have Evolve in play. We just throw 10 cards next turn. That seems fine. those little damage procs. This deck really wants like a bronze scales or something. 
a body slam. Can exhume a lot of things that are meaningful here. Got a lot of kill this turn, if I can avoid it. Well, I'm actually taking five rage, right? Oh, I kill. Well, get wrecked. Should have done that in the other order. We get a Toxic Egg. Any skills we add are upgraded. Which means this power through is upgraded. I think we have enough power throughs, though. Let's get a Ruby Key before we forget about it. There's... <laughs> Ah, uh, there's the bronze scales I was talking about. We have to skip them, unfortunately. To make sure we have the keys to go to Act uh, Act 50. And let's find out how we do against Reptomancer. I think with Immolate Turn 1, we're looking passable here. Looking pretty passable. Um, this actually looks like a good time for a Strength Potion, because it makes uh, me kill both these guys on Turn 1 here. I can rupture Reckless Charge. Actually, no, I'd rather Body Slam than Reckless Charge. Because that doesn't put a Dazed into the draw pile, which I don't want to have right now. Okay, a great fight for Combust. Gonna Armaments, Combust Evolve. Feel bad. Maybe I just Combust Evolve Shockwave? No, that can't be right. Armaments, Rage, Headbutt, Combust Evolve? Headbutt, yeah, that one. And then Headbutt, uh, Immolate back. So we hit her. Seventeen times two. Well, I've got to disarm for you. Can wipe the board of your minions. Oh, panic button. Perfect. I might play that here. She might be attacking me next turn. But I can get, like, the, the amount of damage I'll take next turn is pretty much equal to the amount I'll block this turn by playing the panic button. So we just play it. And then maybe we don't get hit next turn. Totally don't get hit next turn. Excellent. Beautiful. Boss Relic that's gain one energy, but you can no longer skip cards. That might actually be bad. <laughs> that is a pretty harsh downside. I think it's a cool idea. I, I, I think it's better than Hovering Kite. Probably? It's probably better than Hovering Kite. Yeah, I like the idea of getting Juggernaut in play here. Perhaps following it up with Second Wind to just deal a ton of damage. Alpha Feel No Pain proccing a bunch of times. It's in pretty good. Here's our feed. Can I possibly get a kill this turn with that? Uh, I don't think I can. But I'm not that far off from being able to. Almost Strike could draw into Armaments. Armaments would be good. Emily is also pretty good. There's armaments. Okay, our feed is now upgraded, so we're gonna be able to eat Reptomancer here. Which I'm very excited about. Exhume gets me back a free panic button if I would like one. Doesn't help me kill Repto here. Do I have any other exhumes? No. That'll work. 
Okay, we're gonna look to feed on this lady, if we can. We're doing a lot of damage at the end of each turn. Here's our feed. 12, 14 not a kill. But with Rage and Juggernaut it is. So we play Rage, Pommel Strike. Eat the Snake Lady. Delicious. Pantograph, start of boss combat, heal 25. Well, that just seems overpowered. Another Disarm Plus, absolutely, yes. Give me that. More Disarms equals more not uh, not needing to, to do damage in fights. Ooh, I like the idea of the I like the idea of that one instead of all sins. An energy relic that makes you lose one hit point every turn. I can actually tell you right now that that's probably pretty good. It's better than you might think. It's like uh, when I, one energy you can think of is like, hey, you can play another defend. That saves you five hit points per turn. Pretty good. But obviously it would kill you sometimes, and you'd be very upset about it. Like we do question mark. Fire, two fights, fire, boss. Get as many hit points as we can here. Don't want to do the elite, because I would like to get a couple more card upgrades. Um, I would like to upgrade Juggernaut. I think Juggernaut is going to be one of the main ways we deal enough damage to beat the heart. So I'd like to upgrade that. And I don't know, the deck's a hot mess beyond that. Ah, Mind Bloom. Fight a boss from Act 1, you say? <gasps> we could eat the slimes if it was slime boss. We can eat all the slimes. Oh, man. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's eat all the slimes. Come on, slime boss. Yes! We get to eat all the slimes! <laughs> yes! Oh, boy. This is exciting. Oh, boy. Oh, man, I'm so excited. We're gonna gain so many hit points here. So many hit points. Definitely want to feel no pain in play. We need to be very careful in this fight. For optimum slime devouring. We're gonna have to let this guy maybe hit us a couple times or something. So I can't second win here. Period. We're gonna trigger away our combust. Okay, we have block covered here. 42 doesn't quite split you, right? Good. Boink! Okay, so we have to be careful not to play- not to play anything that will accidentally kill the slime boss here. So we're not playing Juggernaut. Let's just thin the deck a bit. this game's score? That's a great question. I have no idea. Who's really? Boink. Okay, we're drawing, uh, I can headbutt armaments to go with our feed next turn. Perfect. Get rid of this power through and the slimes. So we have our upgraded feed now. Which means we can do some damage this turn. We can go for a split here. I don't want to eat the big slime. I think I could eat the big slime this turn. Which is delicious. He's a delicacy. But we'd rather, we'd rather have uh, individually portioned single-serving dessert slimes here for the maximum hit point gain. Okay, 
Okay, there's maybe too many wounds in this. There's too many slimes in this deck right now. Don't make me frail. Okay, so we're gonna look to eat this guy. I can't second win now, so I can't lose an exhum. Tragic. I can power through, though. Yeah, Spoon would have let me get one more feed here, that's true. Okay, here's our first feed. Delicious. Plus four maximum hit points. Uh, now I can headbutt an exhum. We're gonna drop both exhumes next turn, so we double feed next turn. All is well with the world, so I can actually just kill you, right? Beautiful. So I exhum for feed, devour this delicious slime, and do it again. We get 100 gold plus an additional 300 gold, so we now have 587 gold. Um, and we get to add another True Grit to the deck if we want, which I think we do want. We would love another True Grit to be able to exhaust the deck down and generate a ton of block and generate a ton of damage with uh, Juggernaut in play. So we're at 175 hit points now. Which is a lot of health. God, this deck is amazing. This might have been this might be one of my favorite ironclad decks I've run in a long time. Hot damn. Yeah, probably somewhere in the credits, I would agree. No shop till act four? What about if what if I get a shop right here? Oh no, I wanna I wanna hit double hallway fights. Alright. Unused Omomori. Okay, let's upgrade Juggernaut. It's gonna be our main damage engine. This guy's gonna be a little difficult to feed on. He's kind of a jerk. Feel no pain, disarm, disarm. Definitely helps. Not quite full block, so we're gonna shockwave him. Okay, how are we gonna get armaments and feed to happen here together? So we're not taking 10 damage at the end of every turn, but uh, this guy is dying pretty hard. I think I do want to play Juggernaut in this fight. It may prevent me from potentially... ...getting a feed off, and that's okay, if that happens. This guy's dangerous enough that I'm not gonna, like, really, really try to stall. Show me feed. Perfect. Okay, we get feed upgraded. Good. Look at that juggernaut go. It's a beautiful thing. Can I get a kill here? Probably. Yeah, I've got Power Through and True Grit. And Body Slam. And Rage. Body Slam will kill. Ooh. I knew I was going to screw that up somehow. Whoops. 
Well, I can use the uh, Body Slam would kill, yes. So, so Body Slam was what, 31 there? He had 34 health, but I have Rage, so I trigger trigger block, which causes Juggernaut to deal 7 damage and kill. But what I can do is drink my block potion to trigger Juggernaut and get a kill that way. Ooh, so now I think we're ready for the second Body Slam. Block that, can I? I'm trying. We have Pantograph, so I'm not exactly worried about this fight, mind you. pain. Why? Why forsake me? I would really like a second copy of Feel No Pain. If we can find one of those in the store in Act 4, that'd be ideal. Okay, I have a disgusting turn here. I can kill him right now with, uh... Wait, no, I can't. Hold on, what am I thinking? No, I can't kill him right now. I don't know how cards work. I was thinking I could exhume my body slam. That's not how that works. That is not at all how that works. I can disarm the crap out of you. Disarmaments? Not here. There's so many crap cards in this deck. It's hard to navigate them all. Okay, let's put a dazed on top of the deck so I draw more cards. Let's purge some stuff. Okay, I'm almost guaranteed to draw Armament's Feed next turn. So let's just set up a kill here. Regen potion. Do you guys think we need a regen potion? Oh, there's a body slam plus. I would take a... yeah. That would have been better than having a regular body slam. I'm not gonna take a third body slam, though. We're just gonna go up to 189 hit points. Man, this this deck really pulled a lot of hit points out of nowhere. We only had like 100 back here. We gained 80 freaking maximum hit points this act through our shenanigans and our very slow play. That is nuts. That is absolutely nuts. I think I'm okay with these potions. Like, are we really gonna need 15 more health? That doesn't seem like something we're likely to need. Uh, we should probably upgrade Body Slam, huh? Oh, do I... Do I get really ambitious here? This is because of Exhume Feed, yeah. Hold on. I triple feed in this boss fight. Let's see, I could gain 12 more here. I'm trying to figure out, hold on, I'm trying to calculate. Can I, can I beat the record? We have up to six more feeds we can do for 24 additional health. 
which would put us at uh, 199, 209, 240. That's not how math works. Um, 213. Plus one card skip from the Elite, 215. I would need a mango in the store to get to 229. Doesn't seem like it's likely to be worth it. I need a mango and a fruit juice, basically, in the store. That's very unlikely. We already saw Lee's Waffle and Strawberry in a previous store. So we know those are gone. We could get Mango Pear. That is possible. <laughs> Four fruit juice from the Entropic Brew. <laughs> uh, let's, let's believe. Let's believe in the dream. Okay, we're definitely playing Juggernaut on turn one here. Am I just doing Juggernaut Immolate? Juggernaut Immolate seems pretty good. Armaments Immolate also- Armament- Arm- sorry, Armaments Immolate- Uh, Disarm seems, seems even better, actually. Let's get Awaken 1 Disarmed here. Get these birds lower on health. So that they're in... Deed range. We're gonna try to eat these birds. Definitely play this. We block as hard as we can. How much damage am I willing to take in the pursuit of whatever nonsense I'm doing here? Because I could just kill one. Well, no, I can't, actually. Not this turn. We're gonna be ambitious here. <laughs> I want to eat these birds. I believe in the power of eating birds. So if I headbutt something, I would like it to be true probably. Another disarm for you. Where's my feet at? Game. Game. Evolve true grit, true grit disarm. Do I need to power through? I'm triggered away the wounds here. Next turn I have Rage Second Wind power through. I could actually panic button this turn. To block. I bet I can generate enough block through artificial means next turn that it's not a problem. So let's continue to de debuff Awakened One. Get important powers down. Play Panic Button. It's gonna be enough block with the Sender's Bane. We trigger Pocket Watch. We get a guaranteed feed next turn. Okay. This looks like a really good turn. Armaments. Devourer guy with feed. I'm not generating block off that, mind you. But I have ways to get uh, to get block into my hands. So, armaments rage. So rage. Rage is not affected by uh, uh, by the no block from panic button, and neither is feel no pain. So if I eat this guy with feed. I gain 5 Rage Block and 4 Feel No Pain Block. Teen... Teen... Let's get you in feed range here. Oh, and we take 2 damage. 
How unfortunate. How unfortunate. Oh, we also don't, uh, we don't find a exhume here. Something I would ho was hoping we'd find. Take a little bit more here in pursuit of the feed dream. Yum. Okay, now we start. But now we can start curating our deck here against Awaken One. Do I want to play Juggernaut? I don't think I do. With minus one strength, the Awakened One is no threat. Whatsoever. Who's Rupture? gradually thinning the deck out until we have like the right ratio of statuses and whatnot. Which has clearly not been achieved. There's too many statuses right now. And not enough things that aren't statuses. the deck a bit. Man, I wish I had, like, calipers or something to hold on to that block with. Oh, well. <laughs> that chain... That chain reaction there. Uh, I can exhume the feed. We're gonna eat this guy one more time here. Get some cards. I'm actually not sure how this deck's gonna fight the heart. I spent so much of this game, this playthrough, like focusing on how do I win the fight in a way that gives me hit points, that I don't actually know how it works fundamentally, this deck. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, is armaments done? Yeah, armaments is armaments is over here. Do I just start killing him with the uh, power through second wind body slam nonsense? Sure looks like I do. So we get down to the same core set of cards that we beat the champ with, basically. Except there's also a feed involved now. Arr. Boink. Can Juggernaut beat the heart? I think I think Juggernaut in this deck is gonna be enough to beat the heart, yeah. I think that we are probably not going to struggle with the heart fight. That's the the gentlest way I can describe what's about to happen to this poor boss. Too much block. Okay. 
<laughs> Could have easily killed there, but we want to eat this boss. This boss must be devoured. Yum. 201 hit points going into Act 4. Not too shabby. I think we gained almost 100 hit points off of Feed this act alone. Well, Feed and Singing Bowl combined. That is a ridiculous amount of health. 1526 is also a ridiculous score for uh, a run of this nature on A15. Usually our scores are like 1400. I barely took damage feeding on the cultists. That's that's quite a statement, Carissa. Like the, the cultists who scale very rapidly. We just kind of like stalled against them and didn't even care. Uh, what upgrade are we going to want against the heart here? The heart and the elites. Immolate will help a lot against the elites, who I don't think we want to mess around with too much. Yeah, fire hurts me. We've been going slow and steady at this deck. It's it's an experience. This is what it Commander, is. Commander, we've just received the support of another council member. Yes, Hataman. Thanks so much for that Twitch Prime subscription. Welcome to the council. Glad you're enjoying the uh, the low and slow. Our timer and uh, our health are almost the same. That's quite a statement. The low and slow run. The hell do I even... Oh, body slam. Obviously. <laughs> That's another entropic brew. The abacus is great. Dark shackles is great. Oh, man. Oh, man. The cards that are here. Well, we don't get the max of points we needed. We can get double Entropic Brew, if we want. Which means we have seven potions for the heart. So I could, what I would want is, for the heart, ideally I would want to swap out... Uh, I would want Ancient Potion, Power Potion, Entropic Brew, Entropic Brew. I think I'm going to do. So we've got double Entropic Brew, Power Potion, Ancient Potion. Lol. Uh, we can remove a card, which at this point, I'm pretty okay removing Anger. It's really not a card I want anymore. We're definitely going to take a Dark Shackles Plus. Enemy loses 15 strength this turn is nuts. Thorn Potion might have been a consideration for the heart. I'll take the Abacus whenever we shuffle the discard pile, gain 6 block. That'll proc, uh, that'll proc stuff. And I'm quite happy with what we have now. I think this is going to be plenty to defeat the heart with. Question is, what do I do against these guys? Kind of a spooky turn one, huh? Thank goodness for the uh, anchor here. I kind of like um, Ghostly Armor, Uppercut, Disarm, but I would also like to play Evolve. Well, I can't. Fair enough. Rip Evolve, apparently. Uh, so disarming this guy is going to make his attack next turn a lot less scary. I'll take a little bit this turn, a little bit this turn, hit point damage wise, but we'll be, all right. we'll be okay. Can I beat the heart with only strike if I have 200 hit points and 7 potions? Yes. If I got the exact right potions, Dingus. And the exact right potions would be 1 Ancient Potion and 6 Steroid Potions. Which would give me 30 permanent strength. The strikes would do 36 damage. Which means I would be able to kill the heart before he killed me. There might be even other better ways to do it, but that's... That would be good enough. I think. Assuming you're playing, like... You need four or five strikes per turn, but it, that would work. So yeah, Uppercut. Uppercut Ghostly Armor Disarm is the best option I have. I can use potions here if I want to. We, like, we don't need them for the heart. We're kind of overkilling the heart. Honestly. So maybe I have power potion here.
Well, we have a pantograph, right? I'm okay taking a little bit of damage here. Okay, strength down would be annoying if I did actual attack damage with any real means. Um, I can afford to exhume, disarm, exhume. Sorry, ex disarm, exhume, disarm here, and give this guy negative six strength this turn. Uh, the other exhume will have to be saved for feed. I need to block on top of that, so let's go like this. Johnny, Johnny, two by four. Feels painful to do, but I think it's the right move. Yeah, it's a big ol' ooh panic button. All right. Hello, panic button body slam. I'm glad you're here to save the day. Am I playing combust here? I think I am. I think I am. Can I still make the HP go with fruit juices? Mm, only if I get like extraordinarily lucky. I think off of the. Uh, Off of the stuff. Do I feel like getting slayed by chat tonight? Yeah, I would like to do a chat versus streamer run after this, William. So I think we'll switch over to that after this run. Costing myself pocket watch by doing this. That's maybe not something I'm meant to do. Okay, I'm just taking 17. There's no way to avoid it. I would like to save Dark Shackles for a future turn here. And then all the good stuff is on the bottom here. Am I still okay? Nope. Evolve or Metallicize? Evolve. times four. Okay. Abacus is proccing. We can do Feel No Pain, Juggernaut, Shockwave. Do better than that. I do want to get Juggernaut down here. I really do want a Shockwave. It means taking even more damage. It's Pervious instead. Okay, with all the important powers in play, I think we now have control over the fight. In a way we didn't before. So now we start to figure out how to feed on these guys. Before we kill them by accident. Which is easier said than done. I'm willing to lose armaments here. Exactly. Let's lose some burns. I can lose all the burns with second win, but I lose all the other stuff too. That's a sh tremendous amount of damage I'm gonna deal. Absolutely tremendous. I think that's the right move. And yet. I have made it. No more cards. So I can I can kill the spire shield this turn if I want to, but I don't want to because I want to eat him. Oh, that's a good second wind. That is the king of all second winds. So it looks like I can get a feed off here, I'm pretty sure. Let's second wind and see what happens. Okay. Body slam deals 52, so body slam feed should get a kill on the spire shield. 
No. There we go. Alright, I have successfully eaten one of them. Let's get the other one. Get in my belly! Uh, can I do enough damage this turn? This to make any sense? I don't think so. So Juggernaut's gonna quickly kill this guy. Fortunately, we redrew feed here, so we're totally fine. Delicious! Okay, we got a potion back. Well, I could take two hit points, or I could take a corruption for the heart. I would really like to have a corruption in my deck for the heart. This deck is a lot of skills. And I think we can kill the heart very quickly with we with we uh, with we having corruption. With we having corruption? That's not a word. Or I could just take two more hit points, go to 211. I think at this point we're committed to the idea of having the most hit points possible, right? Obviously. Okay, not the best turn one. I don't mind using... We're going to use our Ancient Potion to block the Vulnerable here. I don't mind using this potion turn one to draw some more cards. Disarm on turn one is excellent. Let's go ahead and pop one of our bruises. <laughs> That's like 60 hit points of healing, by the way. Wow, can somebody clip that? <laughs> oh my lord, these each heal for 21 hit points. <laughs> Alright. Good talk. I don't I don't under I don't see how we possibly lose that much health here. So we're gonna armament, disarm. Third card probably triggered away immolate. We don't want immolate in the deck for this fight. We'll worry about dealing damage on later turns once we get Juggernaut in play. So this minus two strength is gonna mean that the heart. Well, we just negated the Philosopher's Stone, first of all. Like, that the, the Philosopher's Stone is here doesn't even matter. I forgot we had this, by the way. Totally forgot we even took this. I just lose Grizzly Armor. I did. Alright, I'm fine with that. Okay, Evolve. Evolve is great here. I would like to Evolve, please. Uh, I definitely don't want a Panic Button. I could power through Evolve Rupture to not take any damage this turn, or I could just take some damage. I would actually kind of like Burn to hit me so that I gain one strength off of Rupture. And then I could do like Evolve, Rupture, whack him with Uppercut. We'll take... We'll take some damage doing that, but we're okay with it. We are super okay with that. I'm not trying to perfect this fight. We Like, we have three Blood Potions. So note, note when this burn hits me that Rupture will give me one strength, which is pretty cool. Okay, there's our Juggernaut. We're very happy to see Juggernaut here. Feel no pain, still missing. That's okay. So we're going to Juggernaut power through second wins, probably, to get enough block here. Juggernaut has to happen. It's our, it's our main damage engine for this fight. Second wind is five times one, two, three, four, five, six. That's plenty. We lose a true grit and that's okay. We also get to body slam for a lot of damage here. Okay, 
Heart is buffing. We're going to play Combust so that uh, our Rupture starts doing stuff. I would like to Feel No Pain, Combust, Shockwave? Keep the heart weak and vulnerable for the upcoming turns. We'll again take damage doing that, and again, that's fine. Actually, Feel No Pain, Shockwave, Combust. I take one less damage. Look at that Abacus go. Ooh, really good turn here. So we can uppercut to remove the two artifact on the heart, which I would really like to do so that I can re-disarm it. Uh, I can Impervious to block this attack. I can Body Slam for a ton of damage. And I might as well upgrade these cards. Actually, no, if I don't play armaments, I get a pocket watch draw, so I just want a body slam here. Okay, we can just block this with disarm. Body's dead right now, Glory Sticker. Yeah, Streak is currently at three? Three. And I don't anticipate losing this fight. Thanks to all these blood potions that I have. <laughs> oh my god. That is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Swear to god. Uh, I can also... It's a good turn to panic button. I can do a lot of damage this turn, actually. If I do something like power through second... Well, power... Th Wait, no, hold on. That's not gonna work, is it? I can't panic button second wind in the in a meaningful way. No, I cannot. So I'm gonna true grit. I think I'm gonna true grit power through, power through, second wind, body slam. So we're true gritting what? I want to play the Reckless Charged? I would like to play the Reckless Charged, so I'm going to trigger it away. Either uh, one of the cards is getting exhausted anyway. Doesn't much matter. So go power through, power through. Second Wind's going to deal a ton of damage from uh, Juggernaut Prox here. Check this out. And I don't have enough energy to body slam because I can't math. <laughs> That's all right. We don't need that anyway. Don't need that anyway. Okay, I don't want to lose my exhumes here. Metallicize uppercut. How do I feel about playing a power through? Thirty-six. That's it. But... Okay, I want to headbutt an exhume so I can disarm next turn. Let's get that body slam upgraded. Yeah. This is not about block. If I don't dark shackles, I can't disarm next turn. I'm gonna Dark Shackles here. It's not how I intended on using that. I think it's fine though, because we're not we're not exactly losing this fight right now. Yeah, six times fifteen, kind of spooky, huh? Disarm heart. Disarm twice. Or do I armaments, rage? Yeah, let's do rage armament stuff. Actually, let's just do rage. Rage card draw stuff. Pennib? I have a pennib? When did that happen? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. No, we're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna definitely use all my potions for the hard kill. Absolutely. Absolutely. Second wind here. 
second win in the body slam is going to deal a lot of damage. Okay, so body slam deals the damage cap to the heart here. Thanks, Pendib. A hundred block. All right, shall we find out what was in the other Entropic Brew? We didn't even need any of these potions. Good lord. Good lord. 21, 21. How many blood potions are in this one? One. Okay, so nothing hugely exciting. But I do get to set up a, uh, a feed kill with the fire potion here. And then we eat the heart. We eat the heart! Delicious! 215 maximum hit points. GG. GG. That was a that was a really fun run. I have not enjoyed a run like that in a while. That was great. Can you find an entropic brute in an entropic brute? Yes, you can, Horst. You absolutely can. Delicious. Delicious. Well, that was a uh, that was a hell of a run. I really enjoyed trying to figure out how to. I enjoyed the puzzle that was trying to figure out how to optimally feed on every combat on our way through Act Three. And I think that also showed that like the potential for a high hit point run is huge. Like, if, we, if imagine that exact run, except we find a feed in Act One instead of Act Three. How much health do we end the run with? Uh, Catmash, um, both Jorbs and Dolphin Chemist have actually had that exact thing happen to them. Uh, Calvers has got a clip for you there. You, you lose, but you do kill the heart, kind of. It's great. That is great. Oh, thanks for watching, Sox. Enjoy, enjoy your sleep. Glad you tuned in.